Yeah. Welcome back to the summit. Still with us, uh, Dr. John uh, Eves, David Katz, and Dr. Omikongo Dibenga. Thank you, gentlemen, very much uh, for staying with us. Before we go back uh, to the debate, let's take a listen uh, to some uh, eyewitnesses um, um, from, uh, from the incident. Uh, let's take a listen and pick up the debate right after. We do not know the exact number of rounds that were fired. I will say this, that it was difficult to watch and shocking, just like it is for everybody. Um, I'm not passing judgment on the decisions my, my officers made. Uh, they will be given the opportunity to explain why they did what they did, as they should. We are done dying! We are done dying! I'm not one family, but I'm family. I've known them all my life. And um, it's very emotional. It's like deja vu. And every time you turn around, you're seeing it on TV. You're seeing it. But until it hits home, that's when it's so bad. What do we want? When do we want it? What I'm here to say is that we are done dying like this. In this manner, with this fate. Nobody should ever suffer the fate that Jalen Walker did. Yes, not eyewitnesses, obviously, but uh, different angles uh, to this uh, uh, situation. And gentlemen, let's kick start to this uh, debate with another 30 round uh, each. And I was uh, debating among myself, uh, w what should we begin with? Um, but, you know, in his masterpiece, uh, Cursed on Earth, uh, Franz Fanon uh, talks about violence as a crucial element then in the context of decolonization, saying that uh, it's a matter of replacing one kind with another. Obviously, a very different context here, but he's talking about the uh, how violence Violence is a key element in such a revolution. And my question to you, and by that we will start the debate, will violent protests help the cause or just push people further away from it? Uh, Dr. Eves, please. Yeah, I mean, for me, coming from Atlanta, Georgia, the, uh, the birthplace of the civil rights movement where Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, was born and lived, I, I got to say that nonviolence is not the way to go. We it should be peaceful protests. In this example in um, Akron, Ohio, the family called for pe peaceful protests. In 2020, when we had um, Black Lives Matter a protests around the country here in Atlanta, there was uh, violence downtown, um, looting, and it was counterproductive. So I think nonviolence is the way to go. Dr. Dibenga. I definitely believe that nonviolence is the way to go. I believe that in many of these situations, much of the violence occurs at night when people are coming in from across borders and don't represent the community that's actually there to peacefully protest. And we also have people who are anti-Black Lives Matter who also want to stir up some trouble and they kind of show up, throw rocks and hide their hands. And that's also an issue. But violence is definitely not the way. And we need to look at ending this police violence against Black people primarily because there's a difference between Black people or in human beings and people like police officers who are human beings who take an oath to protect the community. It's a false right. equivalence to keep comparing the two. Right. Uh, it's, it's not an equal uh, um, uh, matter uh, here. Uh, Mr. Katz, your take? Yeah, well, clearly nonviolent nonviolent demonstrations, protests, that is, that is the American way. That is going to get uh, any movement that you feel passionately about is going to get a lot further, and once again, I I, I, I know that there's a, there's always a, a movement to blame people people other than the, the Black Black Lives Matter leadership. But I'm from New York City. I I've seen such incredible levels of violence as a result of Black Lives Matter protests, and you know it's it just it's just so counterproductive. Yeah, but some suggest that uh, nonviolence can only uh, go uh, so far. Um, so I, I assume that this will be an ongoing debate. And you know, yesterday, gentlemen, and please feel free to interact from this point onwards. Yesterday, had, yesterday we had a, a debate over gun control, and the pro-gun panelists suggested that there's a media bias coverage when it comes uh, to firearms, as in highlighting incidents that end uh, uh, tragically and not covering at all all the use of firearms that is uh, virtuous uh, or helpful to an extent extent. In our debate, do you think there's a media bias uh, when covering uh, protests, let's say, uh, stop the steal vis-a-vis -vis Black Lives Matters? 
Dr. Oh, most definitely. There's, there's, there's no question about it. Look, the, 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 at the end of the day, if you have a Black Lives Matter protest and somebody burns one trash can, it'll it'll be news for, for days, weeks even. Some news outlets are still showing that type of stuff now. But when you come to things like Stop the Steal or the January 6th terrorist insurrection, that's getting more treadway now because of the hearings. But we have to see that even the, in the media, the response of if it bleeds, it leads. People are always going to be more interested in showing some type of violence from one or two people. People out of Black Lives Matter rally versus the hundreds and possibly thousands of people who are out there protesting peacefully for peace. So every single day when I look at the media, I definitely see a bias. And like I said, all violence is wrong, but it's definitely not covered equally. Dr. Eves? Yeah, I certainly agree. I think that there's a way that the media has a, a way of amplifying um, acts of violence that happens between um, black folks and versus others. And so there really is a bias uh, as well uh, among the media and their portrayal, betrayal of violence in our country. Mr. Katz, maybe the bias here is, uh, as uh, you've said, highlighting incidents uh, that involve um, uh, black uh, uh, people and not talking about all the times uh, that there were, uh, let's call it bad encounters between police forces and white men. Yeah, that's, that's, that's absolutely. Look, look at the look at the January sixth coverage, and if you want if you want to see see intense media scrutiny, I'll point this out: who was shot and killed during the January sixth hearing? It was an unarmed white female who was shot by a black police officer. Can anyone tell me how many how many days in jail that black police officer served? None, because he wasn't even he wasn't charged. It was completely well, <laughs> by, by so, all use of by all use of force standards. That was an uh, that was an illegal shooting. Why wasn't he charged? That's not true. It wasn't an illegal shooting. First of all, and number one, number two. I'm sorry. He's he's protecting lawmakers. Make, make, wait, and number two, and number three. I don't see any problems make that, that you have with. Please. You have no problems with Darren Wilson getting off. You don't have any problems with you know the man who, who shot uh, you well, know John Crawford and other people getting off. Darren Wilson. Uh, white officers oh, who kill black on. people get off all of the time. You, 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 this you, man who me, shot Ashley you're Babbitt was you're defending you're the Capitol. Was defending democracy. Your double standard is glaring. One step at a time. The double standard here is yours. Please tell me how the mm-hmm. shooting of the of the female in the Capitol, how is that by any measure of use of force justified shooting? I'm waiting to listen. You break the, the Capitol was the, to go was through a window to get towards congressmen and senators and kill them. Does a threat only imply a gun? Oh, well, there on, were people on, there with on. sticks. There were people on, there wait, with gallows. Does wait, it wait, have to only wait, be a wait, weapon? Wait, 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 Trump didn't want to let him in. Don't forget that. Yeah, gentlemen, unfortunately, we're nearing the end of the, the debate. Unarmed yeah. woman, unarmed, unarmed woman, and Darren Wilson? You mean Attacking. you mean the, the, the officer who was brutalized by Michael Brown? You know, listen, you have, did you ever read the grand jury minutes, or is that just something that wasn't interesting to you? Yes, I, al- yeah. I also know that so, I also so. know that Darren Wilson talked about being scared of Mike Brown because yeah. he was so much bigger from him, but they were the same size. And he, you know, I also know that he talked about a lot of things that other eyewitness accounts didn't happen. And I also know that it didn't matter because they still decided to leave Mike Brown for four hours in the street like a dog. I'm sorry, but they don't treat dogs that ignorantly and negatively. Doctor yeah, Eves, no, no, you, you, that, that was, that yeah. was so horrible. Doctor Eves, please. But, yeah. but you saw, but you heard, so read the testimony of black witnesses yeah. who said Michael Brown was beating the officer. We know yeah. we know mm-hmm. he was beaten. We know the first round was fired while the while Darren Wilson was still seat belted yeah. in his in his cruiser. D- we know that. D- Dr. Eve. Why is that? Uh, uh, see, yeah, that's so let me, let me give you a, Michael Brown let me was give you another let me, was actually Babbitt. Racism. We're so let, me, let, let me give you another example. Gentlemen, yeah, please, please gentlemen, racism. gentlemen, yes. Dr. Eves, please uh, summarize in the short um, seconds that we have left. Yeah, so there, there's evidence that when a black person does something perpetrates a crime and a white person perpetrates a crime, that that person, the black person, um, has a higher chance of being arrested, may have a longer sentence than the white person. So there really is a mistreatment of black folks versus white folks in this country. I am saying it with great sorrow, gentlemen, because I had so much more I wanted to unpack uh, with you, but we are uh, out of time, definitely not out of passion. Dr. Omikongo Dibenga, Dr. John Eves, and Mr. David Katz, thank you very, very much uh, for uh, coming on the show. Hopefully we'll see you again. Uh, We're out for our final break. Back in a bit. Mm-hmm.